the Copenhagen Interpretation and the Schrodinger's Cat Experiment. There are several different interpretations of quantum physics that exist today. From the many worlds theory to the bombing interpretation, the one that has seemed to become the standard for quantum theory today is the Copenhagen Interpretation. In short, the Copenhagen Interpretation basically states that upon observing a probability wave, the superposition collapses and forces the particle to choose just one state. For a better understanding of this concept, check out my video on the double slit experiment. It will be linked in the description below. Getting back on track, there is no one version of the Copenhagen Interpretation as it was formed over the 1920s by Niel Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Max Born, and John Van Neumann, as the small details change depending on who you ask. Some basic principles that follow the Copenhagen Interpretation include the statistical interpretation, which was developed by Max Born in 1926, that states, for example, a photon is not a particle but a probability wave. The second is the uncertainty principle, which was developed by Werner Heisenberg in 1927, that states that position and velocity can't be measured at the same time. And last but not least, logical positivism. Logical positivism was developed by the Vienna Circle, a group of philosophers who met several times throughout the 20s and during this time period. The Vienna Circle had had enough of hearing the extremely hard to understand preachings of earlier philosophers and created logical positivism to narrow down what kind of sentences would be considered meaningful. The Vienna Circle said that only sentences that were A. Proven by definition, example, the red dog is red would be meaningful because the sentence itself states what is true, or B. If the sentence can be proven by observation, example, the house is on fire. This would be a meaningful sentence because regardless if the house is on fire or not, what makes a sentence meaningful is that you can actually check if it's burning or not. This sentence is provable. All three of these basic principles surrounding the Copenhagen interpretation are vital for your understanding of it. However, one of the best examples of the Copenhagen interpretation in action comes from the Schrodinger's cat experiment. Erwin Schrödinger, born in Vienna, Austria on August 12, 1887, didn't actually contribute to the Copenhagen interpretation at all. In fact, he disagreed with it. To express what he thought, he created what we now know as the Schrödinger's cat experiment. This was a thought experiment, meaning that it never actually took place. In this experiment, a cat was to be put in a sealed box with radioactive material that had a 50% chance of decaying and killing the cat, and a 50% chance of doing nothing and allowing the cat to survive. Logic tells us that when we open the box, if the cat is dead, it has been dead in the box for a certain amount of time before we opened it, and was like that when we found it. Or, that the cat is alive and has stayed alive since we put it in the box and we just found it that way upon opening it. But that was not how subatomic particles were seen to work. Quantum theory states that the cat was not always dead or alive before we found it that way. It states that before opening the box, the cat acted like a particle, according to the superposition principle, which states that the cat would be in all states at once, both dead and alive, or in a state of superposition, and only upon us opening the box or observing the particle, it was forced to choose just one state, dead or alive. For clarity, I highly suggest you check out my video on the double slit experiment. Here I go more in depth about the superposition principle as well as the Copenhagen interpretation in action. In this case, the superposition principle is what tells us that the cat is both dead and alive at once, and logical positivism works in favor of the Vienna Circle, stating that when we open the box because of personal experience, then one could say the cat is dead, and it would be meaningful even if the cat was really alive, because you are now looking at the cat, and just the fact that you are observing it makes it meaningful. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe!